Welcome to the Layman Seminary. Even though I will not share this openly with others, I wanted to just shock out, shock my wife there, maybe in the future. So, um, Janet, will you pray us in? Okay, so let us pray. Father God, Lord, um, help us, Lord God, to have wisdom and um, understanding to study your word so that we can uh, share this to others. Lord, thank you so much. And I pray for Rowena that um, she can able to attend. Lord, thank you so much in all this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is after you write down your initial impression and, uh, for your descriptive summary, in other words, what you think it's talking about, after you do that, you can go back and you can change it. Okay, and, that, and, mm -hmm. and then you will feel like it makes more sense. So I'm going to show you. Welcome that. to the Layman Seminary. Today we're going to be looking at how to find the exegetical idea of a biblical passage, part two. Uh, the previous video I explained that the exegetical idea it means that uh, it's just another word for explanation, or another term that I use is a descriptive summary. You're focusing on the Bible world and the past. Well, whenever you're making an exegetical idea, there's some things that you can do. Um, substitution, expansion, reduction, and inversion. And I'm going to talk about these today uh, as we do that. But before I do that, I want to um, – let's see, wrong place. I want to go here. Sorry, I need to close my Facebook. Um, this – uh, this person, this author, is a member of our church, and he's been a blessing. I've interviewed him before. He also has a um, a book called The Fallen that's going to be uh, a, a Hollywood movie. Um, it's in it, it's going to be uh, produced and all of that, and you can watch a video about that. But anyway, I'm I'm mentioning this book because it's called The Unashamed: Learning the Inductive Method of Bible Study. And so this is a book that Clay wrote, and uh, um, in it he he talks about. Uh, these steps, substitution, expansion, reduction, and inversion. So I recommend that book. Um, it is helpful. Now, we can close that, and we can go to Bible.org. I, I, last time I talked about freebiblecommentary.com uh, so that you could find the paragraph divisions, and it doesn't look like Bible.org is loading. Um, I'll try one more time, and if it doesn't load, then I'll, I'll skip that step. Okay, well, my original intent was to do the next passage in James, but that's okay. We can work with what we already have. So um, let's say we pull from our passage, let's say right here, person. This was my exegetical idea from the last video. I could come here and... You can do this with the scripture, or you can do it with after you got a rough idea. You can come back through and say, are there words that I should substitute? And whenever you're using substitution, you're saying the same thing in other words. Okay? Um, there may be parts in here that may need clarification. So you might ask the question, is there something I need to expand or elaborate on? And, I, and I've kind of done some of that in here, and I'll show you all that in a minute. And then there's reduction, where you use less words. So you could say, can I simplify this uh, anymore? Or in version, can I rearrange this so that whenever I share it or um, explain it to somebody else, I have it in a different flow that reflects the text? Okay, so when we come up here, uh, James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Um, basically what you see is that um, like the Lord Jesus Christ I made a reference to him being the anointed man. I was trying to use other words of substitution, but also to clarify and uh, um, things like that. So the reason these are helpful is because whenever you go to make your exegetical idea um, or, or to write it, you can, uh, you can use these methods right here, these steps, to be able to write it in a, in a more concise way. Um, I guess that's it. I planned this video to be short, but I didn't know it was going to be this short. So I will close this one out. And uh, um, uh, if y'all if y'all think that this is helpful, um, then uh, subscribe.
Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about. All right. Expansion. What was that? Expansion. Um, substitution. Change substitution. Right. Substitution is using in other words. Okay. In other words. Expansion. Uh, but the same meaning. Yeah. Is more words. Reduction. Meaning expansion. You explain more. Less words. Inversion is rearranging words, okay? So let's just use the one that we have here from last time. Uh, it's messed up still. Okay, fine, the formatting's messed up, fine. All right, so last time you said, Paul is introducing himself and Timothy is with him when he writes to Philemon. This passage is about greetings and blessings of grace and peace, which is from God, okay? So let's pull our passage up again. Come on, slow pull. Okay, Lisa, I would like for you to read this passage and tell me what it's talking about with your eyes closed, just like what we did before, okay? Can you see it? You're muted, Cicely. Okay. Okay, read the passage. Here, let me hide the answers. Okay, read the passage and uh, give, tell me, tell me a, a oral descriptive summary of what this passage is about. Go ahead, read it out loud. Um, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved brother, and fellow worker, and to Aphia, our sister, and to Apostle, our fellow soldier, and to the church in, in the house. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, so what is this passage talking about? Um, it's it's a it's a greeting later. Okay, Paul begins his letter with greetings. Okay. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, um, All right, so let's just add the recipients. Paul begins his letter to his recipients with greetings, okay? So that's yeah. a descriptive summary. Now, if you look at what you had before, <laughs> this is the brand one. What you had before and see it this one is more concise the reason it's more concise is become you become more familiar with it you know so the, yeah. so usually your first descriptive summary is going to be longer okay yeah. so paul begins his letter the same thing as paul introducing himself uh paul begins his letter to his recipients with greetings okay um so in this situation like this, you could you could make in the next sentence, Paul begins his letter to his recipients with greetings. Um, if you're making like a commentary, you could say, Timothy, Timothy is, with, back. Is, is with Paul, is with him when he writes to... And then you could talk about the what were the three groups that we saw earlier? 
church. Uh, uh, to right. Philemon, right. Athea, Philemon. and Archippus. Uh, uh, Archippus yeah. Yeah. So we could uh, say to Philippi, uh, Philemon, uh, yes. and other Christians mm -hmm. Philemon, present. Yeah. Okay, that way we put the focus on Philemon still, even though there's other Christians present. So what we're doing here is we're using we're using substitution. We're using other words. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, you summarized it one way last time. Now you summarize it another way this time. You know. Um, all right. Okay. And, and so then you can say the greeting portion. The greeting portion includes blessings of grace and peace from God. So technically, this is your descriptive summary because you have Paul, right? He's the main author. He's writing to his recipients, which includes Philemon and them, and with his greetings. So but what we say, did was uh, we with just, greetings from God. With God, how about that? Yeah, well, he's giving greetings, but the blessings are coming from God too, because mm -hmm. he's just represent. Yeah, you could do that, Janet. You could change this even more. But my point is, is that see how you can make this like a commentary. You can, because your summary was this clear this time. So you put that one first and then you go put the information that you had from the last one in there. So now we can delete this one. Okay. And uh, uh, now one thing we can do is notice we did substitution because we used your, oh, oh, there's Rowena. Hi. Uh, Hi, Rowena. <laughs> Hi, Rowena. 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 Okay, um, you haven't missed much. Um, I'm showing that you can use other methods to make your descriptive summary. You can substitute words. In other words, you're using other words. <laughs> you can expand your words, which means you're using more words. You can reduce your words, meaning less words. Or you can invert your words, meaning rearrange your words. Okay? Oh. So... Lisa did this descriptive summary. Paul begins his letter to his recipients with greetings. And then I showed her how she could take her comments from last week and add them in. And it sort of makes like a commentary. See, Paul begins his letter to his recipients with greetings. Timothy is with him when he writes to Philemon and other Christians present. The greeting portion includes blessings of grace and peace from God. So you're already writing a commentary. Um, which can become helpful in a lot of ways. All right, so here's the, here's the thing to think about, guys. Are there any other words that you want to substitute for here? You go up here and you see some words up here and you're like, hey, I want to use this word to describe that idea. And we can put that in here as well. So just, uh, how just about, go ahead. How how about you said that he writes to Philemon and other Christian present? How about in the presence of other Christians? Yeah, you can yeah. you can in the presence of other Christians, yes, you can you can do that. That would be rearranging words, yes. Oh, okay. oh rearrange okay. the words. So if you don't want to use the word prisoner, right? Let, let's talk about this, you know. We, we can use synonyms. Y'all know what synonyms are? I can't Slave. spell them. Slave. I cannot Slave. spell them. <laughs> N-Y-M-S, synonyms. That's still not right. Oh, oh, oh. Synonyms. Synonyms. Y'all yeah, know what those are? Yes, the same meaning. Yeah. Prisoner like slave. 
it's yeah, it's similar. Yes. Yeah. So you could yeah. say prisoner is like a slave. But if you use the, this is the thing. If you use the word slave, does the slave have a choice? No, it's, it's, I think it's. Go ahead. It's, it's, no, it's. Oh, yeah. Paul, uh, a, a, a disciple. <laughs> Paul, a disciple. <laughs> a Paul is a. Uh, well let me show you something we can do this with our observation sheets let me draw all right so when we come to the word prisoner right we can say what ideas come to our mind when we hear prisoner okay well the one idea is is he innocent or is he guilty uh, wait, excuse me Rowena said because she cannot unmute because you're not allowed to unmute her because she's the message Maybe you're in control. I yeah. don't have control over that. I can yeah. ask her to unmute. I just asked no, her no, to no. unmute. No, 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 no. Uh, maybe uh, just a three dots on her name. And then yeah. I checked. Other. I checked the three dots. It says yeah, ask to unmute. The host uh -huh. is not allowing the participant to, un to unmute themselves. Or maybe you're saving is not that? Allah. One second. No way. I could go up by. I was. I never ever mute people ever. So. Yeah. What happened? She, she needs to unmute. It. I've asked her to unmute. She. Hey. Okay, Rowena, leave and come back. Charlie, how old are you? Charlie, how old are you? How old am I? 40, why? Huh? I thought that you're going to forget. <laughs> it's your sometimes, birthday today? Sometimes I do, no. No, it's not her birthday. Oh, no, I'm asking so. her birthday. I thought it's birthday because it's here. Hi! Oi! Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> can you hear okay, me? now yeah, we yeah. can hear okay. you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all. Yes, here we go again. Praise no God. No problem. All right. So let's go back to what I was saying. Okay, you could do it like an observation sheet. All right. So what comes to your mind whenever you hear the word prisoner? Slave. Okay, you say slave. Uh, uh, no, it's either the prisoner that he is a uh, uh, victim or... No, no. No, the, the synonym is Mahal. The, the synonym is a prisoner. Is he innocent or is he guilty? Yes. Guilty. Yes. In other words, is it his fault or not his fault? So like Joseph. Yes. Joseph was sold into slavery. Was it his fault? Convic no. Convict. Vic Convic victim. Victim. No. Convic <laughs> Right. Del, Del Del Bird. <laughs> inmate. Yes. Yes. These are all words that are related to this. Okay. Uh, okay. So yes, you can, if you want to be creative, you could say, like, if I was talking to, uh, uh, if I was talking to a prison audience, I might say, Paul. Something. Paul describes himself as a convict of Jesus Christ. <laughs> How okay? How mm -hmm. if it, yeah? Okay. How do they describe themselves as a convict? Of right. Jesus but then Christ? you would have to explain what I mean by convict. Now the people in prison would understand what I mean by convict. A convict is somebody that's been convicted. Okay. But there's a difference though. If you use the word convict, you run into a whole other issue because some people in prison, they say a convict is somebody that does his time right, okay? 
In other words, they know how to do, they know how to do time. In other words, they uh, a com a, a convict is somebody who's adjusted to the life. So that could mean institutionalized or not. You know, it just depends. And other people would just say, "Oh, you're an inmate," meaning that you're you're new or whatever. So all I'm just trying to say is that depending on your audience, it may affect the words that you use. Okay. All right. So go ahead. We're gonna do. All right. So uh, Lisa is uh, disconnected. Okay. Right. Well, when she comes back, we'll bring her back. Okay. Okay. So, Paul is uh, Paul is uh, con. Oh, it's either we use convict, convict, convict okay. of Christ, Jesus. Yeah. The the main thing is when Paul says he's a prisoner of Christ Jesus, what does he mean? Mm. He, he, Paul is out, right? Quite difficult. Okay, so let's think of it like this. Let's go back to this. Is Paul innocent? Yes. Innocent of what? Innocent of crime. Does he sin? Huh? Yes. Paul persecuted Jesus, right? Yeah. In that sense. Paul persecuted Jesus. Okay. So did Paul deserve to be a prisoner of Christ? Yes, Paul deserved a prisoner of Christ because okay. because oh, of yeah. his sin. Yeah, because yeah, because of his sin, uh, innocent, innocent sin. All right. So the question is: is is that Paul's point here? Is Paul saying I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ? Because I was a sinner, but now I'm obligated to serve Jesus Christ because I'm his uh, slave or his prisoner. Okay. So one thing you could ask, is this literal or is this metaphorical? Sorry, sorry. Is, uh... is, is prisoner literal or metaphorical? Metaphor is Figure of speech. Yeah, figure. So is Paul really a prisoner of Christ? No. Who's he a prisoner of? Rome. Paul yeah. is waiting to go see Caesar, you know. And so this is the Ro the Roman Empire has imprisoned him, but who's in charge of Rome? Who's in charge of everything? Who's in control of everything? Solomon. Christ Jesus. Oh, Christ Jesus, yeah. <laughs> so one thing one thing that goes on is that whenever a person is in jail or something, you know what the first question people ask that person. They ask the question, what are you in here for? In other words, what is, what is your charge? What crime did you commit? Or what crime did they say? A commit, right? So when Paul says he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ, you could actually say he's a prisoner for Jesus Christ. Oh, for. 
because the reason uh -huh. that he's in prison is because he's going to testify okay. to Caesar in That's Rome because yeah. God commissioned him to to uh, uh, um, be his witness to him. We see this from the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the reason Paul does the reason Paul describes himself as a prisoner of Christ Jesus is because he's guilty. He's in there for, he's in prison for testifying of Christ and for the ultimate okay. goal of testifying Christ. So you see what I did? I, I used more words. I expanded oh. the idea of what prisoner means. So if I were to write this out, I mean, I could say something like this. It's going to take a lot more words, but I want you to see how it happens. I could say, Paul calls himself a prisoner of Christ because Christ is the reason he is in prison since he is testifying of Christ okay or it's part of his mission so that uses a whole lot more words right but if you're making a commentary you can expand it if you want oh I see all right yeah yeah okay so it, what other words do we want to think about Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. Is this a physical brother? Or is no. this a spiritual brother? It's a spiritual brother. Okay. And what does it mean to be a spiritual brother? Brother in Christ. It's related to discipleship. Discipleship. Because... Paul teaches Timothy, right? And so there, but but he doesn't say disciple, he says brother, because he wants them to think not so much about discipleship as much as family. So Paul starts out very humble in this letter. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. That's his mission, that's his crime, right? And he also starts on a family tone. Now look how he describes Philemon. <sighs> to our beloved brother. And this is in italics, but it's implied. So Philemon is also described in family terms. So Paul wants Philemon to know, first of all, that he's family. Okay. The reason this is important, because Paul could have said this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, are writing to you, Philemon, who is a prisoner right now. He could have said that. Because Philemon is a prisoner at this time, a different kind, though. Philemon is a runaway slave. He, he's a runaway slave. The one that you read yesterday and Mm -hmm. but Paul's not focusing on his slavery at the first part he's focusing on knowing who's a family and so the principle from that is this is that before you need to focus on what you've done wrong after being a Christian you need to know that you're in the family of God but that's application okay but you could put it this way you can come down here and you can write some more in your commentary. Paul could have <laughs> began by pointing out that Philemon was a prisoner, but instead focuses, uh, but instead calls him Fam family Philemon. like Timothy. To set the tone. 
Ang mission pa niya ay papunta doon sa inutangan niya. Ang inutangan niya ay sino ba ba? Sino ba mga tao yung mga? Ako, inutangan din niya. <laughs> yung si Archipos. Yun. Archipos. Ang uh, yun. Asawa niya si Apia? Asawa ni Archipos si Apia? Uh, who is Api- uh, Apia and Archipos? Is that related? The, those are two yeah. different people. One of them is a sister and the other is a soldier. Okay. Yeah, so mm-hmm. Apia is sister to whom? I don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Let, let's yeah, because, just... Because they are living in the one house because Paul said this letter to Philemon and and to Apia, our sister, and Archipus. And maybe the church the, in is, your house, yes. Yeah, this is maybe one family, the father and the mother and the son. Well, it could, be a, it could be a family, or it could mean that the church in your house means the church that meets the in your house. Yeah, the, the believers in your house. Yeah, and the ones that come over to your house to have church, like Janet yeah. plans to do when she gets to the Philippines. Um, yeah. So... Here's another question. What does it mean right here when it calls Philemon a fellow worker? I mean, they work, they work with God. They work with Christ. Right. So he's a minister. So you could use the word oh, minister. Minister. Oh, minister. minister. But, but this, is Im- this is important because he calls him a worker. Okay. Remember, he's a runaway slave. And some yeah. slaves run away because the work is too hard. All right. The work is too hard. The abuse is too hard. They want to run away. They want to break their contract. Right. (laughs) Uh, So. (laughs) So. But Paul is not saying, hi, Philemon, you runaway slave, you lazy worker. That's not how he's starting out. He's starting out as my beloved brother and fellow worker in ministry. Okay, the other thing to think about is this, is that he's writing Philemon, right? He's mainly Mm -hmm. focusing on Philemon, but he's also writing to everybody in the church. Yeah, everybody in the house. I think Philemon, Apia is her uh, 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 wife and Archippus is her, as their son. Maybe, (laughs) it's possible. In observation, you consider that and then later on, you would go research it. But the, the idea is, is that if, if Paul is saying, I support Philemon and these other Christians, these other people in the house hear that, then they need to understand that Paul is on Philemon's side. Okay. So even though Philemon is a runaway slave, we're going to find out, Paul supports him. Yeah. So this is what Paul is doing is he is starting his letter like this to say, I want y'all to know from the very beginning that I support him. So you can write that down here. Paul begins his letter showing support to Philemon by the words that he chooses. Yeah, because at the end of the uh, passage, I think uh, uh, whatever Philemon done, it uh, accountable is Paul. Right. And, and so check this out. So right here, Timothy, our brother, referred to the spiritual brother. So Afia may refer to spiritual sister, not necessarily mm. physical sister. Yeah, I think but, also they are, um, uh, they are one, one family, I think, in the house. In Christ, in Christ. Yeah, yeah. In Christ. yeah. is it biological or is it spiritual? In Christ. No, I think in Christ it's not. Right. Well, I, I think in my in my in my own uh, comment comment is I think Fel, it, oh, uh, Afia is uh, Philemon's wife. I will search that in other if there is any evidence in other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you'll have to research that eventually. But okay. But those are your options, right? Because we're yeah. we're unpacking the language, and your descriptive summary will reflect what you see. So you see that when you ask questions of the text, it helps make your descriptive summary more accurate or opens up the possibilities. Mm. But the reason I teach descriptive summaries first is because anybody can tell you what they see Mm -hmm. or what do you think this is talking about? Anybody can do that. 
they could do it a little bit or they could do a lot. Some people, you know, and everybody can do it in their own style and their own way. But when you start doing this other stuff, now you can become more creative if you want. So you can make, you can put your rough draft out there, you know, your first thought, and then you can come back in and you can experiment with it. Substitute words, use more words, use less words and all of that. So that's what I'm showing you here. Okay, look right here. Notice he uses fellow worker here, and then he calls Archippus a fellow soldier. So here, fellow worker is ministry, mm -hmm. right? Maybe, I think it's ministry. Fellow soldier, is that ministry? Or is that an actual, uh, if you're, if you're a soldier in Christ. Right. It's oh. probably an idea of soldier in Christ. So he's using these terms of different classes of people in the Roman society, the worker and the soldier, right? No politicians yet, but we got workers and soldiers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then grace to you and peace from God, our father. Uh, you could explain what grace means. That's a scammer. Uh, you can explain what grace means. You can explain what peace means. You can talk about why it's from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, what Lord means. Those are some different things that you can do. Okay. Yeah. Like, bless to you, grace. Like, bless you, uh, blessings to you. And grace is like uh, uh, love, God loves you. God bless, 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 God the, the reason that we know that um, it's one paragraph, see the bold? I already talked yeah. about that last time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. according to this, according to this four, one through nine, but actually it's, it's uh, verse eight. So let's make it more simple. Four, one mm -hmm. through seven. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. All right, so one thing you can understand is that whatever you're studying, like if you're studying a paragraph, then your sub points will be at the sentence, okay? So you can look at the punctuation and you can see commas, 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 semicolon. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then sentence, and then the sentence here. So what that's telling us is that in this translation, one, four, through six is one idea and one seven is one idea okay so if you want to if you want to keep this organized you can make that a and you can make this b right and to remind you that it's at the sentence level to write the word sentence Okay, then you can come back in and you're like, okay, there's a semicolon here. Now, what a semicolon does is it separates two main parts. So what that means is that there's a subpoint here. So we can we can say this is their subpoint is uh, let's see, one, four through. Five. five and then the sub point <coughs> is one six okay so that's making it easier now what you can do now if you want is you can start right here and only make a summary of four or five okay but if you wanted to i'm not saying you have to but you can break it down even to the comma level so comma would be 4A, 
then it would be comma five. Yeah, five. And then one six, there's no comma. So that's telling you, you could even break it down there. So let's just experiment with this, okay? Read 4A and give me a descriptive summary for that right there. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a, four, there's a 4B. 4A. Oh, yeah, yung division niya sa kama-kama, di ba? May kama. So right there, that's, four, that's 4A, the comma. All right, so give me a descriptive summary for that. I thank my God always. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paul say, said that is his is always in his thoughts. Okay. Paul thanks God because he is always or thanks God and let's try uh, and and uh thanks God who is always in his thoughts okay yeah i think it's, it's, yeah, all right i think so I, I, yeah. I, I don't know it's it's i'm getting far away i think he is thanking for thanksgiving to god uh okay <laughs> paul always thankful to god because he because of yeah well, yeah, he is thankful. Because of, yeah, Paul is always thankful to God. Uh, yes. Is it? Yes. Yes. That that's acceptable. Uh, yeah. Either way, yes. Both of those uh, descriptive summaries. That okay, Rowena, you do four B. Four B. Because I heard about your. No, the four B is. Hold on, hold on. Yes, yes. Making mention of you in my prayers. Uh, because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the uh, saints. That's five. We still need to do 4B. Oh, sorry, yeah, making, sorry, sorry. Making mention of you in my prayers. You know, 4B, 4B. I lost. Sorry, huh? No, no, no. You're doing fine. 4B, where it says, make a mention of you in my prayers. Na, nasa ano pa rin okay. siya? Nasa 4 na 4 okay. na ano, verse. Okay. I always thank. Okay. As I remember you in my prayers. Um, Paul always thankful to God. So I will doing a column B. Okay. Well, you've already used thankful to God right here. But here you just say, Paul makes always paul, remember paul okay. prays yes yes paul remembers them in his prayers always remembers them remember. in his prayers. prayers uh what about this prayer we can use we cannot change the word hope or not can you change what word let's say the um, the prayers the prayers, I know this is not the right sentence that you use the hope. Okay, well, yeah, we'll yeah. use hope in a minute. All right, but let me okay. show you something because you all both just figured out something. Okay, now it this is a this is an interpretive question. Is this passage saying I always thank God, or is it saying I? Uh, let's see. I always thank God or I always pray. See, Both. I thank my God always making mention of you in my prayers. I can pray. I can pray. So mm -hmm. does Paul I always I always thank my God if if I remember it is it, I can use us or us. Should is it possible? I always thank my God if I remember you in my prayers. No, it's not nice. But it could be when, when, make, make remembering you in your prayers. 
And Colossians and when is better than if because if is conditional. Yeah. Yes. It's so not right. it should not be. Uh, it should be when when um, when, when I'm praying. I mean, okay. for here, I think Paul is not prayer. Is not. What is the text? Paul did not always text? pray long. I think, and 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 this prayer to for uh, uh, he often make mention of Philemon in his prayers. Yes. I think. Yeah. Yes, he often make mention. In other words, it was his customary. It was his habit of doing. So think yeah. of it this way. I thank my God always. Well, how do you do that, Paul? I do it by mentioning you in my prayers. So yes. that's an option too. Because I remember this this verse, uh, this uh, book, uh, this letter, is, is Paul is writing here. So we, so we just stick on that. A situation that Paul is writing this letter to Philemon. Right. So this so, translation puts, I thank my God always. Mm -hmm. So we will take the always out of this one and just leave it up here. But that's a decision you have to make, you know. But for now, let's do that. Okay, um, Lisa, I think it's your turn. Um, verse five. Give me a descriptive summary of verse five. Because I hear of your love, uh, hearing of your love. So I think Paul oh, thank God for Philemon because of his love and faith. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear what you just did? You went way up here and you connected it to there, which is right. That's correct. Yeah. But but try to make a descriptive summary of just this sentence here. Answer the sentence. Just the sentence. Mm -hmm. So like Paul gives a the reason because uh, the reason because of his love and faith first on Jesus and then towards all the saints if the saints it means the Christians because because he hears of their love and faith mm. uh to Jesus and other Christians. Something like that, okay? Now, now that you have those subpoints done, I did not spell comma right, but anyway. Now that you have those subpoints done, you can go back up to here and you can make a descriptive summary of all of this, okay? Oh, I see. <laughs> so go ahead, uh, Rowena. Make a descriptive summary of all of this. Using using that words, Mar. Okay. <laughs> Paul, Paul thanks God who is always in his thoughts. And remember. And remember them in prayers. And Paul give the reason because I'm not sorry. Upside down. He hears of the love and the Christian. Okay, Paul gives. Okay, if I start this, Paul gives the reason because he hears of the love and faith. Yes, you could actually do that. You could say Paul Christian gives the reason. Question. Paul gives the reason because and faith to Jesus and other Christians. Paul gives the reason why he thanks God when praying for them is because of their, let's just use the word spiritual fruit. So I'm using different words, but that summarizes that idea. And oh, that's not idea. and that's not perfect, but you see what's happening? You're starting to see the connection. Okay. All right, so let's do sub point six now. Okay. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. So is can I use this like uh Paul is hoping that 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 
Paul is hoping that they may, should I, that they may be active because I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. It's a comma. So, it's, so mm -hmm. should I like, uh, Paul is hoping that the, uh, who is it? Uh, Philemon is, will be active in sharing of their faith. Yes. Yes, ab absolutely. So Paul, instead of using uh, prayers, you want to use hope. So we'll go with that. Yeah. Paul hopes that that Philemon that oh. uh, is he only writing to Philemon? If he's not, then we could say they. Yeah. Let's okay. use they. Paul hopes that that they will be effective. In sharing of their faith, will be effective in sharing uh, their faith, and it mentions knowledge through the uh, through not through knowledge, something like that. This is not perfect, but you're just getting an idea. Okay, so now look what you do. You take sub point one six. You can color these if you want, so you can see them. And you take this sub, this summary, and this summary, and you make it the summary right here. So who wants to try that? You're going to take this summary, and this summary, and make make a descriptive summary of both of those. Whatever, um, where, where is it? Okay, let me try. Ah, Paul hopes that they will be effective in sharing their faith and gives the reason why they okay, why he thanks God when praying for them. It's because of the knowledge of their spiritual life. Okay, check this out. I think what you said is right, but I'm going to add another word. Paul seeks okay. to motivate, motivate. Mm, okay. them to share their faith or to apply their faith, you could even say. Motivate them to share their faith by mentioning his prayer for them as a response to uh, hearing about their spiritual progress, okay? Yeah. And, and you can make it a different color if you wanted to. All right. So now we got one seven all by itself right here. Okay. So go ahead, summarize one seven. If you read it out loud, it's a lot easier to do. Remember, you're going through the process. So you, what is it talking about? So, kung wala kung ano, yan mo yung, apply mo sa sarili mo yung general materials para makamparay rin yan. It is, It is about uh, the love of giving the great joy and encouragement because your brother have refreshed the heart of the sins. It means saying, it, okay, your love has given me great joy. Okay, Paul, the word for a lot of times explains or gives the reason. 
For I have come to have much joy and comfort in your love because the heart saints refreshed through you. Paul explains why he feels so strongly for them is because is because of the encouragement. Yes, because of their the encouragement okay. and and let's try and refreshing love. Refreshing love and giving me a great joy. Yes. Uh, refreshing love and joy. And joy. Okay. Willing love. Compare, compare with me during my first time. <laughs> yeah, it was so with, oh with the help of your husband. No, that's that's uh, that's the way of that you can remember. You know, you you imparted so I love and you yeah, you imparted me, him. the sharing of your faith. It is possible that women is sharing your faith. Yeah, you could make these green yeah, if you wanted to. Thing, so. It's just so that you can see what level each one is. Because remember, we started with the smallest level and worked our way up, okay? Yeah. And then now we're going to make a descriptive summary of the two blues, okay? So read, read the two blues out loud and then make it a All right. summary. Paul seeks to motivate them to share their faith. By, men, by mentioning his prayer for them in the response to hearing about their spiritual progress. Explain, Paul explained why he feels strongly for them is because of this encouragement of refreshing love and joy. Paul, okay. So one thing you can do to make it easier is if it's the same idea, you can highlight it. So Paul seeks to motivate them to share their faith by mentioning his prayer for them or response to hearing about their spiritual progress. You have the concept of spiritual progress, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Spiritual pro okay. And then right here, this all relates okay. to spiritual progress. So, so you boy that the joy the encouragement because okay so th this idea Olisa. either one it doesn't matter um <laughs> well, <that's good. laughs> okay. i i, I so keep long. talking it's okay um go ahead okay go, go ahead lisa um okay so the word motivate is one of the key words that we could probably use again all right so we might say something like this, Paul motivates his audience, audience. to the listener to increase in their spiritual progress by telling them how much they have encouraged him and how often he prays for them. You see that? Like I said, this is not perfect, but it just gives you an idea. Um, yeah. I'm, running, I'm running out of colors. So if this is correct, then the point of four through seven is Paul is trying to motivate his audience. So when Paul starts out saying these words, I think my God always make a mention of you in my prayers. In your mind, you should be like, Paul, why are you saying that? Why are you telling me that God thanks me? If Janet says, I thank God for all of y'all in this room, right? Then, then she's trying to be encouraging, right? And then as she says, I thank God for everybody in this room and I pray for everybody. Well, if you pray for somebody, that means you care for them, right? Or encourage them. Yeah. yeah. And, but if you tell somebody that you're praying for them, you're saying, 
I'm telling you that I'm thankful to God for you and I care for you. In other words, I'm trying to encourage you. And let me tell you why I'm encouraging you because I know that you're growing, right? Oh, so but I want, I'm praying, I'm hoping that you will so. grow more. Yeah, so okay. we, we, were, we were apply that in our lives. That he uh, encouraged and then he also, uh, uh, yeah, he also motivates, encourage the heart of the believers. Right. So check this out. This helps us get to, by doing it this way, it helps us get more accurate, right? Mm -hmm. We use different words. We expanded. We used all of that stuff. But here's a trick. We have to connect this to the first part. Mm -hmm. So you could ask the question, how does, and later on we'll make the scripture summaries for this, but how does what Paul is saying here connect to what he said before? So let's look at this real quick. Uh, what time are we quitting? It's it's 11.38 where, where Janet's at. Yeah, Okay. What time are y'all quitting? I just need to know. I need to know where the land the plane. That's all. 12, 12 o'clock. We're, we're going to reach there. Okay. So we got 30 more minutes. All right. So watch, watch this, guys. So Paul starts out. Okay, so Paul starts out saying, I'm a prisoner. I'm, I'm in prison for Christ. Because Paul is trying to relate to Philemon, right? Because Philemon is a prisoner right now because he's a runaway slave, okay? <laughs> Paul talks about Timothy as a brother and then relates to Philemon as a brother and tells him that he's also involved in ministry. Then he mentions other people that are brothers or sisters. So the idea is, is look, guys, y'all need to accept Philemon as a brother and, and as a minister and not just a runaway slave, okay? So he says that, then... Check this out, guys. Then he goes into all this stuff, right? I thank God for you. He's kind of complimenting them, okay? Do y'all know why Paul is complimenting him? Them? Do you know why Paul is saying this? Because, go ahead. Well, that's part of it, but there's something else. Uh, to, to, to motivate the, the hearts of the believers, to motivate those. those to, to motivate them to do what? To, to, to enlighten their heart that she needs to, to do. Okay. I'm going to tell you there's one thing he wants to motivate them to do. Now, there may be more things, but I want you all to mm. think about one thing. So what I want to do is I want to read the whole letter just real quick, real fast. And y'all tell me what the one thing that Paul wants his audience to do. What is the reason why Paul is writing this letter? Okay. So Ready. who wants to be our reader? I thought that you are the one who read very fast and then we are just listening. Okay. I, I, I'll take the hint. All right. Therefore, though I have enough confidence in Christ to order you to do what is proper, Yet for love's sake, I rather appeal to you, since I am such a person as Paul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. Okay? I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, who I am begotten in my imprisonment. I'm sorry, I was misspeaking earlier. Philemon's not the runaway slave. Onesimus is. Yeah, Onesimus. But anyway, Onesimus, who I have begotten in my imprisonment, who formerly was useless to you, but now is useful both to you and to me. I have sent him back to you in person that is sending my very heart. 
whom I wish to keep with me, so that on your behalf he might minister to me in my imprisonment for the gospel. But without your consent, I did not want to do anything, so that your goodness would not be in effect by compulsion, but of your own free will. For perhaps he was for this reason separated from you for a little while, that you would have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If then you regard me a partner, accept him as you would me. But if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it, not to mention to you that you owe to me even your own self as well. Yes, brother, let me benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you, since I know that you will do even more than what I say. At the same time, also prepare me a lodging, for I hope that through your prayers I will be given to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ, greets you, as do Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow workers, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So why is Paul writing this letter? A message of, of, of hope. I mean, uh, 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 why? <laughs> I think based on, on the work of love or forgiveness that he had been wrought in Philemon, Philemon's heart, uh, Philemon's heart. Why I always see heart? Because <laughs> you're in love. Anyway, uh, <laughs> okay, so watch this, guys. All right. It's reminder. I think Paul wants to remind the, I say, the friends or the Filipino people. Um, uh, for me, I think Paul just wants to remind them. Go ahead. I remind. If my let me let me give you an illustration, okay? Okay. okay. I, I, this will help. My wife okay. says, my wife says to me, Asawako, I want to thank you so much for all the times that you have provided for me, you know, through Western Union, uh, <laughs> things like that, right? What do you think? <laughs> but what do you think she's about to do? She's about to ask I for ask something. More. I, I, ask, I will ask more. Oh, I see. She's so, hoping to, to ask more. So I mean, to for, ask for to, to what? So what is Paul asking for? He's asking for more. More what? More encouragement, oh. more motivation, more, more. No, watch this. Oh. Prayers? More prayers. More hold on, hold on. Encourage hey. themselves to do, to do, to do the Watch this. Work. Paul <clears throat> is asking yeah. for Onesimus. For goodness. For goodness. <laughs> to be... <laughs> Accepted. You got really uh, just writing down what <laughs> she wants. Bye. That's why I'm not writing now. No. So put it by Limon. Okay, no, I, so this I messed me. I messed up in the beginning. Oh, that's yeah, why. Onesimus is the runaway slave. Oh, yeah, Philemon is the owner of the slave. Oh, the, the, the boss. Yes. He, uh, oh, I know. I say it's a forgiveness. Philemon, I uh, say, Philemon. Paul asking for for, for uh, Paul wanted Philemon to forgive okay. Onesimus to accept the slave of brother in Paul Christ. Paul asked him not yeah. to punish Onesimus, but to forgive and restore him as a new Christian brother. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And and to consider sending Onesimus. Onesimus back to Paul. So oh, this is yeah. this is the purpose. Yeah. This is the purpose for what what Paul's writing, okay? But all the I think and I pray and all of that, 
That's just how he motivates you to do it. So you, some people might not like this word, but it's manipulation. Manipulation. Yeah. Right. A parent manipulates a child. What way? You know, I really appreciate when you pick up your room, you know. Uh, uh, thank you uh, so much for uh, cleaning up your toys and all of that. You know, if I you love, do that, if you do that, <laughs> if you do that more often, I may be able to give you an allowance. How would you oh. like to start? How would you like to start earning your own money? You know, mm. is there is there a particular thing that you really want for Christmas? Well, maybe you should start saving up now. You know, oh, I will. I will try that. Encouragement and motivation. That's manipulation. Manip manipulation is an encouragement, but story But this is the thing to understand. Paul is speaking by the Holy Spirit, which means that when Paul is manipulating, he's not sinning. But when yeah. we manipulate, we usually sin. Somewhere, if the husband tries to manipulate the wife or the wife tries to manipulate the husband, usually there's a sin. Okay. Usually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Or it uh, can become a sin. Yeah. I think little spoils of anyone present full of color, the beautiful of magic six transition from its library to kinship. <laughs> that, okay. that comes from a result of Christian love and forgiveness. Okay, now check this out. We're not done landing the plane yet. It's a, bar it's a barrier. Slavery was widespread in the... Uh, no, 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 sorry. But yeah. no one is lost of God. They're looking... Y'all are looking at commentaries now. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, but you're cheating. Remember, I'm, Bob? I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, you're reading commentaries. But look, let me show you something. Where is, where is the commentary? Look at this. Now you okay. can see why. Now you why? can see why Paul starts out saying, I'm a prisoner, right? Yes. And then look, because you can uh, see it right here. Is, uh, Where is it? Uh, I just saw it. No. Uh, he says, look, I'm appealing to you as a prisoner of Christ Jesus, right? Uh -huh. Now you can see why he uses the word brother. Because look, it's implied there. The, uh, the idea of sister is family, right? Now watch this. Fellowship is, is a relational term too, but um, brother. Well, brother. Okay, now watch this. For love's sake, I rather appeal. So Paul is showing love. I love y'all. I, I care for you. I rejoice in you that you're growing. So I want to appeal to you based on love, right? even though I have the authority to tell you what to do because I'm an apostle. That's what he's saying. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, okay. I appeal to you for my child. There's another affectionate term. Whom I have begotten in my imprisonment. So he's connecting that to... he's. A, so Paul's a prisoner, Onesimus is a prisoner, or his child that was born in, in slavery, okay? In that metaphor. I'm sending my very, I'm sending my very heart. He's calling him, like y'all say, Mahal. Uh, he's saying uh, my Mahal or whatever. Not so, Mahal. Okay, Mahai. Mahai. Fine, fine. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. He might, he, might, he might minister to me, relates to fellow worker. And again, he says, in my imprisonment for the gospel. Okay. And he says, I want you to do it of your own free will. So Paul's telling him, I want you to do it out of love. I want you to make the right choice. Even though I could force you if I wanted to, because I'm an apostle. All right? Yes. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. Okay? 
And he says, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So the two relationships. And then receive him as a partner that relates to fellow worker. And so you can see that how Paul begins his letter sets the tone. Look here. He calls Philemon a brother. Mm -hmm. Refresh my heart in Christ. He's saying, I want you to do this, you know. I'm, and I'm and I'm confident you're going to obey, so, but just in case you don't, I'm fixing to come. So you, you need to do what I say before I get there. Okay. And then again, fellow worker. So you can see the, the theme all the way throughout. So it's very important to pay attention to how a book begins to how a letter begins because the themes go throughout, okay? So, in review of what we learned today, we learned that when you're making a descriptive summary or writing a commentary for yourself, you can substitute. You can use other words. You can expand by using more words. You can reduce by using less words. And you can rearrange words. Also, you can break things down. If you're studying a paragraph, break it down to sentence and look for the subpoints of a semicolon or a comma or whatever. And then just, if it's just too much for you to say, oh, I can't summarize all this, you can always cut it up and then build it back up together. Okay? Uh, build it back up together, but uh, you, the keywords, right? Yeah. Use the keywords. Hmm. Yeah, just however you want to do it. I mean, that's up to you. You you can you can make your own. So here's the challenge if you want to accept it. Okay. <laughs> now this homework, this homework is optional. Okay. And Janet is allowed to help you. Okay. But your homework is to do the next paragraph. And I'm not going to tell you what the next paragraph is. <laughs> I want you to decide what the next paragraph is and okay. you don't and you don't have to agree lisa if you say the paragraph ends here and but rowena you disagree then make it for your paragraph okay but make a descriptive summary using any of the methods that we've talked about in class you know and then be willing to talk about it next time uh you we come back or with janet whichever comes first you know because if y'all can do more with janet then whenever I'm able to join, I just add on to that, you know? So the more y'all do at home and on your own, the more I can give you when we meet together. You have any questions or thoughts? What is the paragraph that you're going to give us? The next one. <laughs> the next one. So we stopped at... We stopped at no, we stopped <laughs> we stopped at <laughs> verse seven so it's here's a, a hint seven. here's a hint the paragraph yes. will begin after verse seven that's all i'm telling you it's a nine <laughs> it's a nine that hint next paragraph okay we try our best for that great Lisa. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah. You need uh, your assignment. You need to screen and uh, you need to take a picture and send to the girl. Okay, take a picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. my if, face. If you do, Wait. if you do it on on no. paper, yeah, take just, a picture. Just, just your, just with your a, name. with my face just, on it. <laughs> your name on it. <laughs> name. On so the name. signature. Yeah. Next paragraph. Yeah, after seven. Okay. So it means. Hint. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. I I made. Don't the, worry. <laughs> I made the I made the mistake of calling. No, uh, don't worry. Philemon, a runaway the whole time. I it's did almost it at the end of the day. lesson. <laughs> it's Osimus, right? Not Philemon. Yes, Osimus yes. is yes. That's why my thought is running, running away. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> I already did. All right. Nobody's perfect. That's why in the next paragraph that we do, Mahal, we make it mistakes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Mistakes are fine because remember, this is we all. Crumble it. Crumble. This, is, 
this is all observation. So in but, observation, you're considering the possibilities. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. yeah, we and there's a so lot much, of changes, uh, brother okay. Charles. We really learn. We, we, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. And and we enjoy. We're not, I thought it's boring uh, studying the Bible, but. No, I, I like it. Love. I really <laughs> like it. It's something like, okay. you see. I'm it falling in love me. with this. <laughs> yes, it does, it does the Bible study is interactive. It's enjoying because listening, just yeah. listening yeah. can help yeah. a little bit. Like if you like, I listen when I'm driving somewhere, you know, or if I'm working because my mind cannot be totally involved, you know, like it is now. But whenever I, but I prefer to do my own work, you know, so. Yeah, that, that so, so you do both. You listen to pastors, teachers, but you do your own work also. Yeah. You do both. Don't stop listening to others. Don't stop. And, and but at the same time, don't stop the uh, don't stop believing that we're singing. Um, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, keep developing your own ability because you should compare yourself, your work to others. And it will feel really well. You'll be really encouraged when you say, that's what I said. That co scholar copied me, you know. Uh, <laughs> proud. Well, I yeah. mean, it's not a bad proud because it's a good proud because what it means is that the Holy Spirit is working mm -hmm. through you just as it worked through that commentary. We can't, we and if you disagree with the commentary, we then be that's- proud of ourselves. No, it's not a proud. You're it, giving glory to You're God. boasting in the Lord. Yeah, yeah, you're you're boasting. Because God. he's the yeah. one teaching you how to study his word for Amen. yourself so that you can share it with God. others. We're, we're just the vessels, the tools, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother yeah. Charles. Yep. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I really I enjoyed it. it. I enjoyed 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 it. I told, I told you. She is right. right. Please find me now. <laughs> so all my, all my mistakes are recorded. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's, I know that it's, that one is not recorded. It's, okay. It's I record it. <laughs> but but do your best to don't look at commentaries when we're studying because you cheat yourself. Yeah. You, you cheat and then God sees it. <laughs> Sometimes need we need the guide. So I go through the book and read and refer the words and then I scrabble and repair and repair the refer. word. <laughs> yeah. And uh and repair doing, the words. Yeah, doing the descriptive summaries, doing our own first. And yes. then um, first. find, yeah, and then look at the other commentaries. But for me, I don't want to look at other, other commentaries. commentaries. And what y'all don't realize is no. one thing, the thing that I showed y'all today, it's, uh, it's, it's also related to what's called exegetical outlines, yeah, clausal outlines. Uh, yeah. sermon preparation, teaching, it all builds from that. So I taught, I taught y'all the same thing that I, uh, that I taught Dane uh, before he became a pastor. Yeah. So, um, so one day we become a teacher. Yes. So, I mean, I'm just saying everybody Everybody has the opportunity to study the Bible, go deep as they want, or they're able to. Um, so this idea, oh, well, the pastor is better than the student. No, that's not how it is. He, he just serves a different function. He ministers in a different area, you know, but we all have something to contribute. Is there any, I mean, it's, uh, let's say, individual. We have the, uh, okay, I lost my word. Uh, individual like uh, on on cap capability mm -hmm. yeah something something yeah. like like that we have our own ability to well, differentiate we, yeah we all have a spiritual gift we're all unique we all have different personalities different backgrounds and uh and so whenever we study that comes out that's why 
people will say that Bible study is an art and a science. It's a science because there's a method to it, but there's art because it relates to e expression and creativity. Yeah. And that one word is hermeneutics. Yes. Yeah, I share, I share to Lisa already, right? Hermeneutics, Herman. We, we, we read the label, the beginning from the beginning. If I don't know if you still remember that we, we, we read the, the hermeneutics. Yes. Uh, we went to the Acts, I think Acts 8, maybe, I'm not sure. That the Corinthians, Paul, Paul Hermes. And okay, well, I stopped the Bible study at the right time, but y'all are two minutes over. Oh. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you need to sleep. rest also. I okay, know. brother Charles, you don't have work today, right? Because right, I don't have work Sunday. today now. Oh, that's why yeah, you so are tomorrow. available. <laughs> so tomorrow, I give, tomorrow, I give that time for, to, for, for both of you to spend together. So yeah, we need to say goodbye. <laughs> okay, say goodbye. <laughs> okay, okay, next time. See you next time. Who wants to pray us out? Okay. Pray. Okay. Lisa. Yes, Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful evening that we had and wonderful morning for the other side of the world. So thank you so much, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God. Thank you for giving us wisdom. Thank you for having, uh, you know, uh, rejoicing our hearts, to listen your words, Lord God. And thank you so much for this, these people around that, that their hearts are willing to, to serve and willing to listen and also the hearts are willing to teach. Thank you so much for uh, all of them, Lord God, and thank you for uh, yeah, bringing us together in this, in this uh, corner here. And Lord, thank you that, yeah, yeah. thank you for the, 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 the everything, Lord God. Thank you so much. And I, I pray also, Lord God, for uh, their life and that they they also uh, uh, the, the couple Lord thank you for their life oh Lord God that you uh, you also bless them Lord God that they will soon will be together Lord God as I pray for them Lord I know that they are wanting that 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 uh, situation to be happen I know it, with you Lord it's possible thank you so much for everything in Jesus name Amen Amen, amen. amen. Oh, thank you for the prayer. Thank you. Good night. God bless. Good night. God bless. Good night. God bless.